In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this really simple yet dynamic lower third animation right inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into the video. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects and you have a brand new composition created, we first want to begin by creating some new text. So we'll go up to the T icon inside of After Effects. We'll select anywhere on our composition and we're just going to type out a name. So I'm just going to do my name for example, and then we're just going to load up the proportional grid. The reason why we're loading up the proportional grid is because we can frame this up correctly. And this is really going to help us later on when we're creating some masks. So we're just going to move that and make sure that this sits just above this green center line here. Now, once you're happy with the look of that, we can move on and we can add a title. So this is going to be another text layer, and this is going to be your position or your headline or the company you work for. This is going to be that extra information just underneath the name. So we'll go back to that T icon, select anywhere on this composition. And now we're just going to type out your title or your extra information. So I'm doing a video creator, highlight all of that. We'll go into the character window. If you can't find the character window, then go into window and then select character and that will reveal character on your page. Go into the character window and here we can just decrease the size of the font. We can change the color. So I'm going to add a slightly yellow color to this. We'll press OK and we'll make this not bold. And then from here, you just want to line this up so that it now sits just below that line. And if we turn the proportional grid off and we zoom back out, you can see we've got this really nice and simple title. Of course, you don't have to position that to the left. You can position that in the middle, on the right. It's completely up to you. Just make sure you're using that proportional grid to really get that lined up nicely. And of course, make sure that this bottom text sits below this green line. It's really important that you pay attention to that. Now, once you're happy with the look of your text, we can now move on to the animation phase. So we want to animate this in to begin with, and then later we're going to animate this out. So we'll move roughly one second into our video. So we'll move the cursor over to around one second. Then we'll select both of those text layers or we'll press P on the keyboard and we'll select position. And that will be the stopwatch icon. That's this little circle. Select that and it should turn blue and that's created a new keyframe. So from here, we'll move back to the very beginning. We'll turn our proportional grid back on. Now we'll go to Chris Brooker. So that's the name. So select your name and we'll pull the position of this down. So you want to make sure that this is under the line. Then we'll go to your title. So video creator in my example, and we'll pull that above the line. Really simple. So if we play this back, you'll see they're just switching. But at the moment, it doesn't look very dynamic, but it will be in a moment. We just need to add some masks. So we'll go to that second keyframe. So they've both rested in position. We'll select the name to begin with. So we'll go with Chris. We'll go up to this tool here. We want to make sure we select the rectangle tool, not the rounded, not the ellipse tool, not the polygon. You want to select the rectangle tool. And we're just going to draw a rectangle mask, making sure the bottom of that mask is sitting on that green line. So zoom in if you need to make sure it's sitting on that green line. And then from there, you want to go into that mask. So we'll select the drop down arrow on the mask and create a new keyframe on mask path. And it's really important here that this position. So this keyframe here on the mask path lines up with this position here. That is really important. Now we'll pull the cursor back to the very beginning. You want to select that mask. And now, as you can see, because we've moved the position down, the mask has also gone down, but we don't want that mask to go down. We want that to sit on the line. So we'll push that mask all the way back up to make sure that it's now sitting on that line. And if we play this back, you'll notice the name appears from nowhere. So we just need to go ahead and do the exact same thing on video creator. So we'll create a new rectangle tool. There we go. Selecting the text, you want to draw that mask with the top of this mask now sitting on that line. Go into mask one, making sure we're in line, select mask path and the stopwatch icon. Move back to the beginning and then we'll move this mask down so that it's now sitting back where it was sitting before. And we play this back and we've got this really cool reveal. 
Of course though, at the moment that was a bit slow for my liking. I don't think it was dynamic enough. So what we're gonna do is select all of those keyframes that we created, the second set of keyframes, and we'll move those closer. So we'll move those to the left. This means there's less time for it to transition in so it will come in quicker. And that looks a lot more dynamic. Of course, though, there's one extra thing that we can do to take this to the next level. We're going to select all of the keyframes that we created, right click on any one of them. It doesn't matter. Go to keyframe assistant and select easy ease. Playing this back, you'll see this gives us a lot of life to the animation. Of course, though, if you wanted the name to come up first and then the title to come in later, that's very easy to do. We just want to select all of the keyframes on the video creator text and we'll just move that over to the right. So name comes up first, then the title. So now that you've got this animating in, it looks really nice, really awesome. Essentially, now you need to get this off screen. So you wanna leave it up on screen for however long you need this to sit on screen for. So we'll do eight seconds. And then from there, what you want to do is you want to copy those last set of keyframes. So we'll start on the video creator and then command C, command V, so copy and paste. Then we'll select the first set of keyframes, command C. We'll move over and command V. So we play this back, that one disappears. Now we'll do the same thing for the name. So we'll copy those last set of keyframes, command C, command V. Select those first keyframes, copy those. We'll move over and command V. So now that should animate out. Pretty cool. So from here, we can just close down those two text windows. We'll go back to toggle switches slash modes to reveal the motion blur icon. We'll select both of those text layers and this option here, this motion blur button, you want to select one of the boxes underneath and then make sure this motion blur icon here is blue. This is going to add motion blur to our animation and it just makes it look a lot more pleasant. And there we go. That looks really awesome. From here, what you can do is select both of those, right click and select pre-compose. And we can put this to Chris Brooker lower third, press okay. And now essentially pre-composing that into its own pre-composition means that this can now be treated as one video layer. So if we increase the scale, if we decrease the scale, if we move the position of this to the bottom right, everything is gonna be affected. Both of those text layers will be affected and it will now sit where it needs to sit. And the great thing is because we've done this in After Effects and there's no backgrounds, this is all done on a transparent background, which means if we add in our footage underneath, there you go, as you can see that is animating on on that lower third, it's on a transparent background and that means it's sitting on top of our footage when we add the footage in underneath. And there you go, that is a really simple way of creating a dynamic lower third right inside of Adobe After Effects. So. All that's left to say is thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.